Hello YouTube, I am Scott Grammer and I am the old audio guy and today is still uh, October 14th, 2021. I had said this morning in my first video, the uh, COVID update, that uh, if I felt like it, I would try and make some better content for this channel. Now, right now I don't feel like putting together a whole bunch of graphics and everything else, but I think I can manage to sit here and be a talking head for a few minutes. Um, and what I want to do is I want to expound a little bit on a video that I posted a couple of days ago, a short called Two Ways to Blow Up Your Vintage Stereo. Uh, in that short, I mentioned that two very easy ways to blow up your vintage stereo are to A, drive a solid state amplifier into a short circuit, or B, drive a vacuum tube amplifier into an open circuit. That is a circuit where there's no load, no speaker connected. And I've had someone ask me, you know, I understand, uh, Scott, how running an amplifier into a short circuit could blow it up, uh, but why does it bother a vacuum tube amp specifically to run into an open circuit? And so I thought I would answer that question. First, let's look at it from, from the perspective of a solid state amplifier. With a solid state amp, it's really simple, just like you might imagine. Into a short circuit, there's a whole lot of current that doesn't belong, and that excess current is what does all the damage. That's with a short circuit. With an open circuit, there's no current. Where there's no current, there's no damage. And most solid state amplifiers do not mind being run with no load at all. Uh, hence, you have speaker switches on them that will turn the speakers off. And you can plug in headphones, which represent a very, very light load. Or you can have no load at all, and they're just fine. It won't hurt them. But tube amps are an entirely different creature. And the reason that tube amps are different, I can give you in one word. Transformer. All vacuum tube amplifiers, with a couple of notable exceptions, use output transformers because you have to match the naturally high impedance of the output tubes to the naturally low impedance of your speakers. You can't take tubes with 5,000 ohm output impedances and drive an 8 ohm speaker. It just won't fly. So, uh, why then does this output transformer, which does this impedance matching, uh, cause an issue when there's no load? And the answer is this, uh, without going into too much detail, I could, but it would really require some graphics that I don't feel like creating today. Uh, a transformer with no load isn't a transformer, it's an inductor. And inductors store energy in the form of a magnetic field and then dump it when the exciting current is taken away. So you have the current flow going through the primary of the transformer and it's at this level, all right? Then suddenly the music starts and it goes up and down. Okay, with the music, the current goes up and down. That's all fine and well with a transformer because you'll get the exact same thing up and down, up and down, impressed across the load and everything's fine. The problem comes when there's no load and when the transformer stops being a transformer and becomes an inductor. When you do this into an inductor, the inductor does this. It produces the first upward motion. And then as the current disappears, the inductor wants to keep moving. It rings like this. And it can produce massive spikes. So instead of this, which is what you're trying to get, you might get this. All right. There's the problem. Start with the fact that a tube amplifier usually has anywhere from a 300 to a 600 volt power supply. Add to that the fact that the way the primary in a push-pull amplifier is wired can double that voltage on peaks when the amplifier is working normally. So now you're looking at between 600 and 1200 volts across the primary. That's normal. That's when everything's working right. But you take away the load, and now all of a sudden the transformer is storing and dumping energy because it's not a transformer anymore. It's an inductor, and the voltage can go to thousands and thousands of volts inside. And what will happen is this high voltage will burn through the insulation inside the transformer. It will burn through the enamel insulation on the wires, through the paper insulation between layers, and through the paper insulation between the primary winding and the core, which is almost always grounded, and it will destroy your output transformer. Now that you've destroyed your output transformer, that's not bad enough. Now this multi-thousand volt peak is also appearing across the plates of your output tubes, which are not intended to handle it, and you can pop them too. So let's say you've got a nice 50 watt amplifier that uses a pair of 6550s 
and uh, you've lost a $300 output transformer and a $200 pair of tubes just because you ran it for one minute with no speaker connected. Don't do it. It ain't worth it. And in fact, that ringing that I described to you, the, the continuous oscillation like this, there is a test for transformers that lets you know whether or not they're shorted that uses that ringing as a test. In fact, it's simply called a ringing test. And what you do is you disconnect the transformer from all of the circuitry. You usually do it simply by pulling the output tubes and also disconnect the, uh, the load. And you connect an oscilloscope across the primary and then momentarily connect a 9-volt battery to the primary and then disconnect it. And when you disconnect it, what you should see on the scope, if the transformer is good, is you should see it do its ringing thing like this. It won't just go pop, pop like that. It will ring out. And you count the number of rings, and if there's more than 9 or 10, then the transformer is good. If there's only one ring or no rings, the transformer is shorted. And there's no way to fix it short of tearing it all the way down and rebuilding it completely which I don't do. There are very, very few people who do do that, and it costs money to do that. So, long story short, never drive your tube amp without speakers connected to every channel. That is all. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.